yeah. The gorgeous Macmillan Inn and the beautiful fountain here in Savannah, Georgia. You get one of these next time. Look. One of the lower ones? Yeah, look, there's like a little place. A little sitting there. Sit. That's so cute. It's <laughs> so pretty. Look at the, the actual like flames in that lamp up there. Where? Over there. Like over that second set of stairs. Oh, yeah. We're in Savannah. The Savannah accent. Glasses dripping out your mouth. I don't want to get too close to people. Gosh, it's nice. Not humid. I think it might be the Madison we're thinking about. Who provided these funds? France. March to the sea. We don't say the word confederacy down here anymore. Probably the most haunted building in Savannah, the Sorrel Weed House. Someone amongst us is a skeptic and doesn't believe in ghosts. Ah. I do. <coughs> yeah, so this place has some, something about it. Over here. We are in the Forest Gump Square now because we're horrible tourists. And there's people getting married and sticks falling out of trees. Jenna. It was like over here on this side, right? Why are you asking me like I know? Or maybe it was over there. I don't know. Maybe we already passed it. Who knows? Who can be sure? But we're here. Hello and welcome to Prohibition Times. You're not supposed to take videos. Prohibition it's supposed times. to be a secret speakeasy. But you're not talking very quiet if it's a secret. It's supposed to be a secret. You don't even remember what drink this is. If they're gonna use this against me in court. <laughs> As they should. I like the raid. Oh no. Popped up moonshine machine. Moonshine runners, but the origin of NASCAR. <laughs> I mean, hey, I can believe. I like their old timey posters about COVID too. The criminal justice system was swamped, and epidemic violence and law breaking was the norm. I mean, our court systems grew exponentially. Yeah. The concept of plea bargaining to clear overcrowded court dockets and the creation of. It's real rainy. We're gonna go see Bird Girl. It's so fair. I love all the very serious statues. That's Michelangelo and Rembrandt. I'm sure the others are artists as well. Bird girl. You should read the book. Why is she called bird girl? Because she's holding out the plates for the birds. I'm for the ghost tour with a skeptic. <laughs> that thing. I'm not talking to anybody. It is chilly. Oh. Are you hoping to see anything? I know I won't. Why don't you believe? Because it's not real. You don't believe in ghosts? You've never experienced anything you can't explain? Nope. Maybe the night will be the night. I've seen some. Yeah, you don't believe me. Mm -hmm. You would if you had been there. No. Yeah. Oh. There's something pretty famous for. Yeah. Um, wow. Unfortunately, some folks call us the city of the dead. I think that's because our downtown historic district is about two and a half miles, has between 12 and 14,000 burials, and only about oh 600 standing headstones to show for that today. So he noted on his thermometer that there was a 38 degree drop in temperature in that hallway, and that's pretty extreme for what we do. So he took a note of where he was standing and what time it happened, and he said when he looked up from his notes, a shadowy figure crossed the other end of the hallway from one open doorway into another. We didn't know it that night, but about a week later, going through our evidence for our audio recordings that evening, 
We actually recorded a male voice saying, I murder. At the same time, we'd mark that drop in temperature, and we think maybe he was taking claim for the type of crime. So we Foley House in, and immediately took off as a cool place to stay in Savannah. So a few years later, in 85, they purchased this building next door and um, added some more rooms to their roster. Uh, that was I guess there might be fireworks in the yeah. yeah. Oh, the Christmas boat thing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, we are not in their attack. So that night, uh, they were having a controversial play opening. It was, they're set to open Thomas Dixon's The Klansman, and someone decided the show should not go on. Uh, they burned the theater to the ground before they ever opened the doors to the audience that night, and obviously rock on. But unfortunately, <laughs> there was one casualty in this first fire. There was somebody in the building, unbeknownst to the people who set the fire. It was an, an actress who had arrived early. She went down into her dressing room, which used to be underneath the stage to conserve space, and was unfortunately trapped when the fire was started. Now, that is the only woman we know about having ever died on this lot, uh, because it's been the old Savannah Theater for just so long. And when we did our earlier investigation here and captured a woman's voice in the space, we were uh, quick to link that to that uh, actress from 1906. So this first investigation was back in 2010. It's actually before uh, I worked for the company, so it was a team of all male investigators and technicians on board that night. No women in the building when this was recorded. They had just arrived a little after 9 p.m., walked to the front of the space, and started unpacking their equipment on the stage. You will hear some slight shuffling in the background from the equipment being unpacked, but very loud and clear. You will also hear a woman humming through a vocal scale, like uh, or a musical scale, like doing a vocal warm-up, singing, if you will. Definitely hear her. <coughs> Beer. <laughs> he captured the apparition of Matilda walking from left to right across the front porch. So he actually saw this through his phone screen that night, but not with his naked eye, and immediately alerted the rest of the group. We went over to see if anyone was outside, and they were not. We've since tried to debunk the video by taking it down frame by frame, but we've actually never been able to. You never see Matilda walk up the left side of the stairs or down the right side of the stairs. In fact, she just marches across the front porch before disappearing completely by that fourth skinny column at the far end. I know with that light there, it's kind of hard to tell that it is four columns. Uh, the video also will play three times. Each the same between those columns. That first time goes very quickly. We'll zoom in. This here. Does she just stop? Uh, the you don't make fun of stuff like that. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's the house you took it. Yeah, okay. Wait, we, we took it. Mm. Yeah, we took it. Yeah. One of the investigative ones where they give you equipment. It's actually because coffins had collapsed from the weight of bricks over time and sealed that little pocket of air. Yes. <laughs> Now another reason why the cemetery looks a little more empty than it actually is, is because of some vandalizing that happened here. It was in 1864 during the Civil War. General Sherman and the Union troops had just finished their fiery march to the south and stopped here in Savannah. About a week after their arrival, they ended up in control of the city. And they were using a lot of the downtown buildings for lodging, but they had just so many soldiers that a lot of lower level soldiers from the Union side of the Civil War spent their time in Savannah camping in our biggest patch of green grass at the time. Colonial mm. Cemetery. Good times. Okay, so the tour we did was fantastic. It was the company Afterlife Tours, and they actually do their own investigations. So a lot of the evidence we saw came from them. Um, really great. Highly recommend. Super successful trip to Savannah. Um, most places were like relatively busy, but um, a lot of mask policies in place. That's what I was like mostly worried about was whether or not people were going to be like actually sticking to any mask rules or anything like that. Like anytime we were anywhere near people, we wore them. I mean, you never do know. I mean, we did take a risk by coming here, but we had already had to push this back um, one time previously because I was actually exposed and then had to quarantine. But we did everything we could to stay safe. We had amazing pizza from this place called Screamin' Mimi's. Um, I mean, just, just the perfect night and the perfect trip.